Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. You caught me. I'm listening to the ground to see if I can hear any rumbling. To see if maybe there's something underneath my ground. I don't think there is in my part of the world. But let's go inside and we'll read about some things that are underneath the ground. Let's go. Welcome back to the comfy chair. Hello and welcome to story time. I am Corson Miss Hannah. And if you've been remembering from last time, our big word of the month is geology. Geology means the study of our earth. Now, last time we worked at rocks, and rocks are the basis of almost all of everything in our Earth. This week we're going to talk about some of the things that are made of rocks and underground and just some cool stuff. We're going to talk about caves and volcanoes, and maybe we'll even play with an earthquake. These are all things that happen on our Earth. So, our first book for this time is called Caves, and it's by David L. Harrison. So should we read about caves? Do you know what a cave is? You'll soon find out. Let's read. <laughs> Here we go. It was hot, so hot that most cows stayed in the shade, but not Millicent. She and Farmer Hal's other cows stood in, in the hot sun on a rocky hillside where some thick bushes grow. What a curious way for cows to behave, said H Farmer Hal. He found out why. His hills in the pasture had a hole in it. Do you see the hole? Millicent liked the cool air rushing around her. She liked being a cool cow. When the surprised farmer pulled back the bushes, he found himself looking in a deep, dark room. The room was part of a cave. How did the cave get under Farmer Howe's pasture? The answer involves raindrops. See the cool cave? When rain, when rain falls, drops splash into rivers and ponds, drops splatter into streets and rooftops, but most drops fall onto the ground. Some drops trickle down through the grass and leaves and pebbles and soil below. They seep deeper and down deeper past pebbles and soil to the big rock, to rocks as big as mountains. Do you see the rocks underneath there? They trickle and seep into holes and cracks into giant rocks. And after enough time, tiny bits of the rocks begin to crumble and wash away. All going in. After many, many, many years, no one knows quite how many. Some of the cracks grow into tunnels and rooms inside huge rocks that become caves, like the one Millicent found in Farmer Howe's pasture. Some of the caves form strange and wonderful decorations. They look like lily pads or ice on a pond. D waterfalls, draperies, flowers, pearls, popcorn, all sorts of different. Water helps form the decorations too. Drops seep in the cave and hang, that hang, drops seep into a cave and hang from the ceiling. When they evaporate, bits of rock they carry are left behind. Drop by drop, small rings grow but in the ceiling. Bit by bit, the rings grow into straws and cones. You see the straw, there's straws over here and more cone shaped over here. Different shapes of the water leaves. The straws and cones go bigger and bigger. When they hang down the stone icicles, we call, we call them stalactites. So when they're hanging down from the ceiling, they hang tight to the ceiling. We call them stalactites. Some drops drip and plink onto the floor. Plink, plink, their loads grow bigger into smaller bumps off the floor. The bumps grow bigger and taller. And when they reach toward the ceiling, we call them stalagmites. When they go up, when they reach from the ceiling, go up, we call them stalagmites. They might. They are mighty on the ground. There you go, stalactite, stalagmite. Many animals spend time in caves. Most famous is the bat. Some caves 
In some caves, bats sleep all day upside down, clinging from the sea lights. At night, bats fly out to find food. We are glad they do. Each year, hungry bats eat billions of gnats and mosquitoes. Swallows and other birds build nests at the mouth of caves in a quiet, place, shady place to raise babies. Raccoons wander in and out. Deer stop by. Foxes, rabbits, skunks, and rats come and go sniffing for food and a place to hide. There's foxes, rabbits, and rats. Spiders hunt crickets and salamanders hunt spiders. Fish and crayfish hunt insects in the cool cave streams. But the true cave dwellers live so far back that the light never reaches them and a few visitors disturb their feasts. Two true cave dwellers are blind. They have no need for eyes. They have no need for color, and so many are clear and white. There are the salamanders and the spiders and the crickets. White crickets, white crickets and white centipedes, right here, feel their way through the dark, searching for food. Hungry black blind beetles scratch on the loose earth. And spiders hunt for food, white crayfish, creep to pools and streams. Blind fish, no bigger than your hand, are clear through. Life in a cave is a constant search for something to eat. Sometimes floods carry in fresh supplies. Can you imagine being blind? But that's a lot of how the animals are because it's dark all the time in a cave, so they don't need the light. Peekaboo. Weeds and roots and leaves and twigs and tiny animals from the soil are all food for the hungry dwellers in the dark. Not a speck is wasted. When we visit a cave, we must be careful. A cave is a community. Every creature is and every creature and everything is important. If we touch a stalactite, we will change forever the way it grows. If we step on a cricket, we may upset the balance of life. It's up to us to protect all the caves and the creatures that dwell there. Farmer house cows do nothing of caves. They just wanted to be cool. Like us, they lived on the surface of the earth. But below the surface, deep down where the rocks can be as big as mountains, lives another world, an amazing world, the world of caves. The end. We found a lot of caves in our on our earth. Some so, so big that we haven't found the end of them yet. And we still don't know if there's more to be found. We think there are. Do you want to go pretend to be inside of a cave? Let's go. Let's go on an adventure in a cave. We're going to pretend like we're walking through a cave. So let's go, right? We're going to go. We're going to go. Most caves are down, so we're going to go down first. All right. Here we go. We're going down. All right. Walk down with me. Ready? Good job. All right. Let's walk. Look over there. What do you see? Do you know what it is? It's hanging down. It's a piece of rock hanging down. Do you remember what it's called? It's a stalactite. Ready? Say stalactite. All right. Duck underneath it. There you go. Oh, good job. All right. Let's keep going. Oh, I see a piece of rock coming up. Up, up, up. Do you remember what that one's called? It's a stalagmite. All right. We better hop over it. Ready? Hop. Oh, you made it. Good job. All right. Here we go. Walk with me again. Oh, gotta go around this stalagmite. Oh, oh, gotta go around the other one. Oh, oh. did you make it? Okay. Oh, right, here, get some really squeezy, squeezy in my cape. I'm so crazy. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. All right. Oh, there comes the little one. Duck. Did you make it? Okay. Oh, it's getting darker. We have to pretend like we're animals that live in the deep, dark cave. It's dark. They can't see, they're blind. All right, okay, we're back. Should we pretend to be bats now? Squeak, 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 squeak. Oh, hold on, I gotta hang upside down. Can you hang upside down? My right, tenants, these are bat claws. Okay, good job. Oh, that was quite the adventure in a cave. Good job. Let's go read another story. Welcome back. Our next book is called Harry and the Hot Lava, and it's by Chris Robertson, and it's about a volcano. Well, kind of. It's a silly book. 
but we're going to talk about it as a volcano and lava. Lava is what comes out of a volcano. So let's read this. Something very strange is happening at my house. Very strange indeed. Oozing between the coffee table and the couch. Between the toilet and the tub. Between the bookcase and the bed. It's the hottest, most dangerous liquid known to man. Beware the hot lava. Quick, jump out of the way. Run for your life. Save yourself. Look out. It's right behind you. The hot lava destroys everything that stands in its liquidy, melty path. Can anywhere in the house be safe? Not even balancing on the kitchen table tiles. Not even behind the closed bathroom door. Not even atop the highest bed in the bunk. It's rising, rising, rising. I must leap but to safety. One, two, oh no, three. Thanks, Ma. Oh, Harry, what an imagination you have. Just like your father. Come on, son! Lava burn. The end. He was just pretending. But volcanoes are really cool and they're a really fun thing. Would you like to make your own volcano? Come outside with me and we'll do it. Hi, welcome outside with me. Now we're going to do our our experiment. Now, here's what you need for the experiment. You'll need baking soda. You'll need some vinegar. You'll need some sort of container to hold your baking soda and vinegar. And if you want to color your vinegar, you'll want, you'll want a little bit of some food coloring. Now, over here is my volcano. I'm going to po point it down to you so you can see my volcano. Here is my volcano. <laughs> right. Right here is my volcano. I've already put the baking soda in it. So, here in a second, we are going to we're going to pour the vinegar in and we'll count it down. Five, four, three, two, one, and you guys can watch it explode. Okay, you ready? Alright, Sam and Tally, you ready to help me? Hold on, let me get my Alright, let me get my all right, let's count it down. Ready? Five, Five four, four, three, three two, two one. one. Here we go. Make it book say explode. Lava. Wasn't that cool? Let's go back and read another quick story. Wasn't that a cool experiment with all of the lava? Well, I've got one more book here. This is called, this is about caves again. This is called, There Was an Old Man Who Painted the Sky and it's by Terry Sloat. And it's about some things that used to happen in caves. Not as much anymore, but used to happen. So let's read about it. You ready? Let's go. There was an old man who painted the sky, but I don't know how he painted the sky. It was up so high. There was an old man who painted the sky. He splattered the stars and made the moon white. He painted the night sky, the midnight across the great sky, but I don't know how he painted the sky. It was up so high. There was an old man who painted the sun to shine the next to 
next to night and a day had begun. He painted the sun to follow the night. He painted the night across the great sky. But I don't know how he painted the sky. It was up so high. There was an old man who flew around the sun, painting the planets that spun one by one. He painted the earth to circle the sun. He painted the sun, and the day had begun. He painted the day to follow the night. He painted the night across the great sky. But I don't know how he painted the sky. It was up so high. Here's the earth and the sun. In olden times, it would have been the other way, because we thought the earth was in the middle. There was an old man who painted the water, the fish and the crab and the whale and the otter. He painted the water to wash over the earth. He painted the earth to circle the sun. He painted the sun to, and the day had begun. He painted the day to follow the night. He painted this night across the great sky, but I don't know how he painted this sky. It was up so high. Look at the pretty fish. There was an old man who painted the land, birds and beasts and woman and man. He paused to look round at the creatures and smile while he painfully played, painted child after child. Look at all the animals and people. Then resting, he said, I've done all I can, I can, and handed his paints down to woman and man. They painted their children, their sisters and brothers. They happily painted themselves and each other. Beating their drums, they danced around fire. Spinning with joy, they leaped higher and higher. Their colorful patterns, their spots and their stripes, Flew off, to, flew off onto creatures and that watched in the night. There was a young child all alone who found the world round her painted on stone. There were children like her. There was woman and man. There were creatures of water and creatures of land. Look, do you see them up here? They're painted. There was the earth that there was, there was the earth with planets that spin one by one as they whirled through the sky that circled the sun. She felt the old man had painted high on a wall, and she wondered and wondered as she looked at it all. There they all are, up on there, and there's the old man. How did the old man paint the whole sky? How did he do it? It was up so high. There's also stars. You can see the pictures and the stars. That end. There's been a lot of cave paintings found. Isn't that cool? That people used to paint all their stories in caves. I think we should do a fun activity where we pretend like there's an earthquake. Would you like to pretend with me? Let's go. Let's pretend that we're going to have an earthquake. An earthquake is when our earth shakes. We live on tectonic plates. And sometimes they move, and that's what causes an earthquake. So, when I live, there's not as many earthquakes as if you live on different parts of the world. But let's pretend. First, we start feeling the shakes. Oh, it's moving so much! Now, when you're in an earthquake, you're supposed to get where you can be safe. Some people say underneath a really sturdy desk. Some people say in a doorway. So. Got my doorway over here. Come on, with me. Come on. There's my doorway right there, and I'm gonna get in my doorway right here, so that I'm safe in an earthquake. Good job. All right, ready? We're gonna shake, shake, shake. Grab your doorway. Grab your doorway. Grab your doorway. Okay. Good job. Let's go do the big word of the month. The big word of the month for this month is. Geology. Geology means the study of our earth. Can you do it three times with me? Ready? One, two, three. Geology, the study of our earth. Here we go again. Ready? One, two, three. Geology, the study of our earth. One more time. Ready? One, two, three. Geology, the study of our earth. Good job. Let's go see what our craft is for today. And we're back here in the comfy chair for our craft. A fun craft this week is to make your own cave. This is Talia's. She made it. She colored it all brown. She did both sides. 
so you can do it. There, remember, there are lots of animals and different things like that that live in a cave that you could also include. So make sure to tell me all about it in the comments below. Well, that's all we have today. We will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye!